Coming up on Mountain News this morning, two Kentucky organizations pledged to help rebuild our region after historic flooding left many people without homes. And a city here in eastern Kentucky hosts an event to raise some much needed money to support those who are diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News this morning. Good morning to you. Looks like it's Monday again. I'm Dakota Makris. Thanks for joining us. It's almost five o'clock. Let's head over to Brandon for a look at our forecast this morning. And Brandon, before I, I left the house this morning, I asked my Alexa, I said, you know, what's the temperature outside? I think she said some somewhere in the 50s, I believe. I think. You asked your Alexa? Yeah, because I had to, to know what I was going to wear out the door. So I asked my Alexa. <laughs> what about the WIMT weather app? Now, Brandon, I did not have my phone near me. Mm. I had my voice. And I had my Alexa. Mm -hmm. So, right. or I could have texted you. You could have. But I didn't. I was away. You were. All right. <laughs> Let's get into that forecast this morning. And of course, the WIMT First Alert weather app is free, and you can download that on your smartphone. Let's take a look at a few clouds out there this morning. We're still seeing those across parts of the region. They're going to continue to stick around for a little while this morning, and then we're going to continue to see some sunshine as we get later in the day. The clouds did help keep us just a touch warmer overnight, but Dakota is right. It's in, it is in the 50s in most locations this morning. It's like 50. Let's see here. Double check here. 57 in Jacksboro is our warm spot this morning 46 and wise is our cool spot so again a lot of cloud cover out there this morning helping keep things more manageable four degrees colder in Moorhead basically exactly where it was this time yesterday London Prestonsburg Pikeville Logan wise and Jonesville also Middlesbrough a couple of degrees warmer in some spots so a normal day to a little extra because it's Monday on the coffee meter this morning and you'll see the outlet door forecast features some milder temperatures and then some sunshine by the afternoon hours after the clouds give away 67 a daytime high Dakota. All right, Brandon, thank you. Lost Creek was one of the harder hit areas during the flooding we experienced in late July. Our Sheller Wilcox talked with the man from there who lost everything and who's just trying to recover. Attic. Flood damage scars the creek banks down Highway 476. The destruction is a frequent reminder of the terror survivors experienced. I've definitely walked through the houses, just the gutted out houses. I can't even imagine what they looked like anymore. Parker's family has lived along the creek for decades, and all of the built-up memories, tangible or not, are washed away. All except Parker's great-grandmother, who the Lost Creek native calls his last hope. Uh, she's probably the only living, the only piece, the only thing that I really care about. She's, um, she's taken care of me my entire life. and They now live in a camper surrounded by destroyed homes the family owned holding on to the tiniest bit of collections that survived. I've always loved collecting stuff. And these are actually some of the things that I've gotten from family and just random people. A war memorabilia collection once filling his bedroom now depleted to a few items. I've got everything from, I used to have everything from helmets to old medical gear. This box is actually full of stuff. <laughs> Now, even without a lot of cherished items, Parker says they and a lot of others are still having trouble getting assistance. I'm surprised you can't go in there with the clothes on your back and just ask for assistance. <laughs> Most of the stuff we owned is gone. Our documents, our paperwork, our birth certificates, my high school diploma is gone. Fighting through tragedy still surrounding them. In Lost Creek, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Parker says he and his great grandmother are both looking for permanent housing so they can start over again. The Appalachian Big Ideas Festival included a big announcement from local nonprofits on Saturday. The Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky and FAHI are partnering with the Housing Development Alliance and uh, homes to build 16 and plans for to build 16 new homes for flood survivors. The homes will be split between Perry, Breathitt, Letcher, and Knott counties. Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky CEO Jerry Rolls says they are on a mission trying to improve the living conditions in eastern Kentucky. People who are here can feel the excitement, can feel in spite of the flooding, in spite of our obstacles, in spite of our barriers, that we still have big ideas. The project named Higher Ground is supported by $50,000 investment from FAHI and $1.23 million from the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky. Roll says she hopes the state government will also pitch in and support. 
Millions of Americans are currently battling Alzheimer's disease or other forms of dementia, but hundreds of Southeast Kentuckians came together during the weekend in hopes of becoming one step closer to a cure. The 2022 Southeast Kentucky Walked in Alzheimer's event took place in London. The event was an opportunity to not only raise funds for the Alzheimer's Association, but it also gives the families and caregivers of those with Alzheimer's a sense of community. As on a personal note, I think each individual needs to take it upon themselves to learn more about it and um, to educate themselves because you just never know what Alzheimer's is going to impact you. The event had 200 registered participants helping the Southeast Kentucky Walked in Alzheimer's group reach 33,000 of their $40,000 fundraising goal. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The American Cancer Society estimated that nearly 4,000 women in Kentucky were diagnosed with breast cancer this year. Oncology nurse navigator Vicki Vicky Frisbee is a cancer survivor herself and says there are some symptoms to look out for like changes in the breast tissue and skin. Any changes with your breast um, is a reason to see your, your the physician and um, to be evaluated and to go into further testing such as a mammogram. Some women experience a discoloration um, on the outside of their breast tissue. There will be a free breast cancer awareness walk in Lexington at Jacobson Park on October 15th. Well, this past weekend in Buchanan County, Virginia, Remote Area Medical, or RAM, hosted a couple of pop-up clinics. RAM hosted its clinics at the Riverview Elementary Middle School in Grundy and welcomed people in for dental, vision, and medical care. Clinic coordinator Kim Falkenberry says these clinics are very important for small communities throughout the region, and the best part is that everything the clinic offers was free for patients. All of the services we have here, um, everything from Narcan training to glasses to dental extractions, it's all completely free to, to our patients. Um, no one in the building is allowed to ask for money of any kind. Well, she says the volunteers were made up of doctors, nurses, other providers, and coordinators. Well, thank you so much for getting your Monday morning started with the Sierra Mountain News this morning. When we come back, if you plan on visiting Hawaii's beaches for a holiday getaway, you might need to double check your brand of sunscreen. The reason why is just ahead this morning. After a few clouds this morning, the forecast is looking much better, at least for the next several days. I'll tell you about some possible late week changes in about three minutes.